everyone and welcome to the semi-finals of the Magic the Gathering World Championships for 2010 with me Pro Tour statistician Rich Hagen and the Pro Tour historian Mr. Brian David Marshall. You see in the foreground Palavida Dama de Rosa, there he is on your screen. He is playing Guillaume Matignon of France in a blue-black control mirror uh, and uh, Palavida Dama de Rosa has kicked off with a tapped land and looks like Inquisition of Kozalek is going to be the first play of this semi-final from Guillaume Matignon. On the back table, we have another Guillaume, another Frenchman. It's Guillaume Wafatapa, and he is up against Lova Janser of Sweden. And, BDM. And another blue-black deck. And another blue-black deck. So, BDM, who you got in the two semis? It's hard, it's hard to... Hard to, uh, you know, root against uh, Paulo Vitor Damodorosa here. Uh, I mean, I think he, Guillaume Matignon seems to think that Paulo is favored. It's, it's a very tight matchup. Uh, Guillaume is typically very modest and very self-deprecating when it comes to his matchups. Mm -hmm. I, I have to admit, I'm, I'm rooting for Guillaume because I want the tie. <laughs> oh, it you is nothing sadist. personal against Paulo. It's, uh, or against Brad. <laughs> or against Brad. But I, I, do, I do love the possibility of a tie. And it's and a tie is something very alien to North America, because all sports they, they don't really have ties. Even you know hockey has their occasionally the, you know, the NFL will have a tie. But. Yeah, but like you know, nineteen eighty nine, the last one. So uh, Guillaume takes the cancel over a spreading seas or a disfigure. He's not going to take the disfigure here, obviously. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Halla uh, will return the favor. Inquisition right back. Jace the Mind Sculptor, there's a Preordained, Spreading Seas, Doomblade, Creeping Tar Pit, one more land. Paolo again, jotting it down, you see at the top of your screen. Seventh Pro Tour Top 8, and for both these, second time in the year, for both these, second time they faced each other in the Top 8. This is a replay of the final. Of the finals, that's right. From Pro Tour San Juan. So Paolo took the Preordain away. Head scratching from Guillaume. So, but he has another one at the ready. The front row of the uh, arena here in Chiba has been completely taken over by Team Sweden. I imagine anxiously uh, waiting for. Uh, their first glimpse of uh, Lova Jansa and the, the shark hat. We'll keep them up to date until we get to live action for them and uh, many of you around the world. Looking forward to seeing uh, GWT again, Wafatapa against Lova Jansa. There's a Jace, which and is going to get Manali. Yeah, there isn't a Jace. It was there, <laughs> but no. See a, you see a couple of dead cards sitting in Paolo's hand. Is that to disfigure and uh, consume the meek there? Yes. And uh, so he also has Inquisition of Kozilek. Jace sticks for Guillaume. Yeah, so uh, there are two in this game so far, one of which is French and in play on the battlefield, one of which is Brazilian and not on the battlefield. It is in Paolo's graveyard, and that is uh, a proverbial 1-0 at least uh, to Guillaume. So Guillaume uh, chose to uh, look at the top of his deck mm -hmm. because the Creeping Tar Pit is able to just finish off the Jace if all he does is brainstorm there. Okay. So he goes up to five counters, loyalty on Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yep. The Creeping Tar Pit, Julie comes in, puts Jace TMS to two, and then Matignon will go again. 
knowing that, in a sense, Jace has brought himself another turn because Paolo has had to spend all that mana to get the Creeping Tar Pit to go to work. Uh, this time I will brainstorm, uh, says Matignon. Well, now, now he's got the untapped Tectonic Edge, so mm -hmm. if he wants to activate a uh, Creeping Tar Pit, he can shoot it down before it gets anywhere. So there's a Disfigure there, there's a Doom Blade spreading seas. And in, and in that sense, the disfigures are not uh, not that dead. No, because of the creeping topics. Yeah. Sounds like news for Sweden uh, that turn four of that match uh, features uh, Jansa coming up with a primeval titan, two mana ahead of the curve. And they all applaud. Oh, bless him. Just think what it'll be like if he's winning the world title. Ah, <sighs> easy boys, plenty of time to go. Looks at this figure, consume the meek as Inquisition with his uh, duress. In the background, you see Yansa with the shark hat and uh, beyond him is uh, Guillaume Wafatapas. There's Paolo. He seems to have been sitting there pretty much all year. Just that head resting on a hand. Matignon, so I'd like to preordain. I think all but one of the preordains in this top eight so far have resolved. The one being the one that Randall needed to go and find a second land against Palavida Dama de Rosa in game five of the quarters. Right. And uh, Sweden is up uh, one game on France now in the other quarter, in the other semi-final. Indeed, L uh, Lovie Jansen leads one to nil. Courtesy of that turn four primeval titan. And there comes the creeping tar pit, and there's a disfigure. So a quick game one uh, in Yansa against Wafa Tapa. I'm going to see the other tar pit get uh, tectonic edged. So sinkhole and strip mine for Guillaume Matignon. Mm hmm. And the blue planeswalker edge continues to be 1-0 to the Frenchman. It was interesting. Last turn he preordained, he, he had brainstormed with uh, Jason, and then just pushed those cards right to the bottom. When he preordained, he didn't even look at them again. He was mm -hmm. just like, I didn't want those two. Yeah, they can go. Paolo flicking, consume the meek and disfigure round and round. in your fetches. Shuffle some cards they didn't want back in. Mm -hmm. So that's the first point. First blood. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to cast Spring Seas on the remaining tar pit. Matinho, remember, only three and three in standard with this deck on day one. So he's got a 4-3 record total now. Palavi de Dama de Rosa was 5-1 in standard, so now 6-1 with the deck. So he has the edge there. I'm going to brainstorm. I will see another Jace the Mind Sculptor. Reordain, and is that a, cons uh, a consume the meek? It yep. is. It is. We see Paulo's <laughs> foot tapping nervously. The shot we really want to see is Brad Nelson's foot tapping. Yeah, for a moment I thought it was Brad Nelson's foot tapping. I thought they'd just, uh, just taken us to the backstage area. I wonder where Brad is. I know I've seen him around I the I just saw the him building. around behind the stage. He seemed pretty, pretty, pretty calm, actually. Yeah. It's like, you know, not in his hands at this point, so. And the thing is, what's the worst that can happen if you're Brad Nelson? You have 63 pro points, you're level eight, everyone thinks you're an absolute god of the game right now. And, and they're and, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. So um, the thing to keep uh, in mind about Brad Nelson's performance, mm -hmm. is this is 63 points, or however many yeah. it ends up being with his with, extra points, yep. on nine events. 
That's right. He's played uh, six Grand Prix, uh, three Pro Tours coming into Worlds, uh, and then he has Nationals. So this this is his eleventh event of the year. You, you don't see you see people getting to these totals with, you know, in the case of Paulo, if he wins, you know, possibly two finals appearances in the Pro Tour in mm -hmm. a year, or like when uh, Ma Martin Yuza has seven played in seventeen of the eighteen GP this sure. year. Sure, and when when Shuhei won. You know, he was traveling everywhere. Yes, literally every event. <coughs> Handful of cards for Matignon, who whistles while he works. Inquisition, spreading seas. Cancel. Jace. Some land. Some land. I believe it's two spreading seas. All right, okay. So that's the end of the uh, brainstorm portion of the turn. And now I'm going to cast Spreading Seas. And draw. And Jace the Mind Sculptor continues to dominate this opening game. <laughs> spreading Seas is my own land. Because <laughs> I naturally <laughs> like an island. Back we go. Cancel. Yep. Matignon continuing to improve his uh, draw quality. I'm going to brainstorm again. And every time Palo flicks those two cards back and forth, disfigure and consume the meat continue to reveal each other in a near endless loop. Tectonic Edge. There you go. go. And straight back the other way. Nothing to do from Paolo. Paolo's down to four lands. And it's still a non-basic land, even though it's a uh, an island. Indeed. So neat. able to tectonic edge it. Uh, so that means we're down to three. Three basic swamps in play for Palavita Dama de Rosa. And fate now I'm going to fate seal me. And uh, this is the march of Jace the Mind Sculptor towards 6, 8, 10, 12, and then over the top. Uh, looks like the current likely outcome. Misty Rainforest for Paolo. He now looks like he's got a Grave Titan in hand. Uh, brainstorm. Uh, brainstorm. Okay. There's a Mana Leak, Jace Bellerin on a land. Matignon will uh, put land and Doomblade back on top. Creeping Tarpit. My 463rd land. How are you doing for land, Paolo? Not so good. Paolo doesn't want to thin his deck of land here, so he's not going to break that Misty Rainforest. No, indeed. He also doesn't want to... Uh, he, he would like to draw, leave as many lands in his deck as possible <laughs> for him to draw. And it sounds like a, a, a minor play in that you're going to have 17 land left or 18 land left. But over a number of games, over a number of formats, over a number of years, that's the play that actually gives you the edge the over the non-pro. He takes the disfigure, which turns out to not be a very dead card at all. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see some tar pit action. There it is. I decided I didn't like the idea of being disfigured, so I got rid of that. In I come. Paolo now does crack the Misty Rainforest. Looks like he drew a Preordain. So I'll find my, uh, my blue. And there is Preordain. Matignol says, that's fine. Doomblade spreading seas is what uh, Paolo sees on top of the deck. There you are. What a great shot that is. Uh, over the shoulder. Looking below at Doomblade. Kind of wants that spreading seas for the... But he can't, uh, he can't take it. He needs land. And ends up uh, drawing Mana Leak. Blind, as it were. So 
So Martin, you're holding at the edge here in game one. You see Wafa Tapa and Yansa in the background. Yansa leads one to nil on the back of his primeval titan on turn four. And we'll take you to see Guillaume Wafatapa and Lovi answer at the conclusion of game one here. Another Inquisition of Kozilek. So, of course, away goes Manalik. And then here comes Grave Titan. Boom. Palo Shaw. Yep. And that is game one to the Frenchman Guillaume Matignon. He moves one step closer to a World Championship final and a potential playoff with Brad Nelson. Paolo will still need three games here to be player of the year. So we are going to take you uh, to the back table, which is going to feature, feature Lovi Janssen uh, of Sweden, the 26-year-old from Linköping in Sweden. So as we've already told you, Lovey's up one game to zero. He got a very early primeval Titan out against the blue-black deck and was able to uh, ride that mana advantage to victory. And uh, so you can see on can our master shot, them. there's the there's the super cam uh, going across the top of the set. That's actually like the security cam that they leave on at night after everyone leaves the, <laughs> the arena. <laughs> yeah, there's your, there's your Lovi Yancey. And there are two. Lovi Yancey in the shark hat. Guillaume Wafatapa. Uh, looks like uh, that Lo might be in uh, Inquisition of Kozilek resolving. Could be a duress. Guillaume Wafatapa uh, is the actual shark here, isn't he? Well, yeah, one would think the pro shark <laughs> circling, uh, circling the waters, blood in the water. Oh, and in fact, that's memory side, and away goes uh, a whole bunch um, of Titans. Didn't like getting primeval last time. And uh, away they all go. Uh, Yansa looks like an Olamog the Infinite Gaia uh, in his hand. Uh, Wafatapa has Jace the Mind Sculptor in play with five counters on. And it's one to zero to Yansa. Waffa Tapper having a good look through the deck. That's one of those sort of hidden benefits of a card uh, like Memory Side BDM, where you actually get to look through the entire deck. Even though you found the correct number of copies, sure. it's like, oh, let's do a quick mem memory memorize off my Memory Side uh, to uh, work out exactly what you brought in against me here in game two. So uh, Jansen now gets to um, reveal. Uh, reshuffle his somewhat abused deck it always feels do you, do you not feel it's like when violated you always feel a little violated even when they look at your hand but when they actually pick up your entire library and it's like your your life history is laid bare it just feels ugh. throw your best four cards off to the side yeah. like there's so much refuse we'll get rid of these you can have you can have the remnants back oh not nice So Wafatapa talking at lunch, he was saying it's always a little bit scary playing against Eldrazi because, you know, they can do nuts things. <laughs> and you can't always uh, deal with that. Draws Draga Tree Speaker for his turn. Reveals Aya Vugin. Mm -hmm. Plays Aya, Aya Vugin. It's his first land drop. So over we go. What's there now? That looks like Summoning Trap. It is. And talking of information, this is a case where Oracle of Muldyr is a bit of a double-edged sword. Certainly. But he's, uh, that's an Eldrazi temple. He has uh, the ability to search for something now with his Eye of Ugin. Attack Jace. I'm going to attack Jace uh, with the Oracle of Muldyr. That'll put Jace, the Mind Sculptor, back to three. Wafatapa looking at Doomblade, Grave Titan. Ratchet Bomb that will not be getting to 15. Don't get your hopes up at home, <laughs> despite what BDM says. And uh, is that a second Doom Blade there, I think? Draga so, Tree there's Jiraga Tree Speaker. An interesting choose is not to... Twice. Level it twice. Chooses not to uh, search with Ayavugan. I, well, I guess he wants that summoning trap. He has Ulamog. 
in hand. And Wafa Tapper looks at his blue planeswalker. He has only has one mana untapped. A profoundly uncomfortable state of, a players f uh, of affairs for a control player. And in fact, I'm just going <laughs> to level it three. Level it twice, pause, level it third time. Level go. <laughs> yes. Wafa Tapper then. 29 years old from Nod. It's one card, so Waffa Tapper knows full well that it's Alamog the Infinite Gaia. She has more than enough mana to cast next turn. Indeed. Remember, it's already 1 0 to the Swede. You see it there on your screen. Waffa Tapper will brainstorm another Doom Blade, another Grave Titan, and the land goes into hand. One of Wafa Tafa's great strengths is his ability just to appear calm throughout proceedings. Uh, you never feel that he's under any pressure. Uh, I think probably the first time I saw him in serious action was a Grand Prix Top 8 where he was drawing, I think, something like nine land in a row. So he uh, Doom Blades the Juraga. And you would never have known that he was just literally with nothing to do, land, 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 land. Of course, he died eventually. Uh, but he made his opponent work for it all the way, and that's one of his big strengths. Getting rid of uh, the tree speaker does set Yanta. It sounds horrendous to say sets him back, right. and given how much mana he's got available, but it, it does set him back. Another Doom Blade, this time on the uh, Oracle of Moldiah. Mm -hmm. So game's like, let's let's just see how how long we can make this go, while I attempt to find something more useful than multiple Grave Titans, or until my Grave Titans become critically useful. Summoning Trap, an Ulamog. That's the hand for the Swede. Cast Summoning Trap. Cast Summoning Trap. Sure. So, what's he going to uh, find out of these seven? Uh, a couple of Jiraga Tree Speakers, another Summoning Trap there. And anything else of use? Uh, it's like an overgrown battlement. Uh -huh. It's probably not quite as exciting as he might have liked. But then... We know that the memory sides have taken Primeval Titan out of the right. mix. It's actually a fairly uh, much, much less likely to hit than uh, normal. Uh, a lot less likely, because although he has the Battlements and the Tree Speakers, sure. you're looking at one Worm Coil Engine, one Avenger of Zendikar, one Terastodon. He has one of his two Alamogs in hand, then there's one Emrakul. He, he may have actually been looking for a Mana Accelerant there. Yeah, sure. But certainly the, the conventional hit, finding the, the giant guy, much less likely. Right, because now he has the nine mana he needs to cast Ulamog. Mm -hmm. Minus the two from... With discount. The discount from Ayabugan. Yes, exactly. A, uh, a spreading seas would be pretty nifty here right now from Yelm. Well, his Jace the Mind Sculptor is under no pressure, so an ability to, to dig with the Brainstorm ability is obviously there. His Doom Blade, Grave Titan. You just see the Grave Titan peeking out on the right of your screen. Both players deep in thought. They're underway uh, on the, the front table, by the way, just to keep you in touch uh, with Paolo against Matignon. Early uh, in that one, uh, Paolo's uh, uh, getting rid of an Inquisition of Cos 
Inquisition of Kozilek with his own. As Matignon says, enough of this phony war. If you're going to get to the mana you need, I'm just going to run out uh, my Grave Titan. There's 10 power of guys. Over to you. The answer. Plant overgrown battlement. Go. Replayed. With Jace the Mind Sculptor going down to two to send the overgrown battlement away. So maybe Guillaume's plan here is just to uh, attack into those uh, irritating little plants. Uh, and just try desperately to keep the Swede off the manor. Has another Grave Titan in hand. See the French flag there. They didn't do badly in the team uh, competition. They, uh, France sort of uh, started out pretty badly, uh, but ended up uh, partly, largely on the back of Guillaume Matignon, of course, with his 41 points. But they finished sixth uh, and were with, uh, within the hunt. And ultimately, the 30 points of Julian Perez and the 22 points from Antoine Ruel that propelled France to sixth could yet contribute to Guillaume Matignon being player of the year. Absolutely. We need to see another. Nope, he doesn't choose to bounce this time. He brainstorms. Sees and sees a spreading seas. Sees a spreading seas, indeed. You're doing pretty well on the tongue twisters today, i got to say. So Ayavugin may uh, no longer be giving discount. Would be the theory, would it? Or, or you could get the uh, Eldrazi Temple. Mm-hmm. You, you give him back a mana. The Ivugan doesn't actually tap for mana. Yeah, that's true. You take away two mana on the temple, but he's going to get the Ivugan because the inevitability of that card is... Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, if a tapper draws a card, it's a, another backup Planeswalker. He's going to Doomblade the Overgrown Battlement. Which is another reason why he was able to brainstorm that turn. He's really good. He's since we've been looking at this, he's been under pressure with uh, a ton of mana on the other side, but it it continues to be not we'll quite enough down. for Think what the Swede cool. wants to do with it. Um, I'm going to take four. He says, uh, chump blocking the Grave Titan. And now Waffatapa will complete his turn with a Ratchet Bomb. And, of course, the benefit there um, is that uh, he'd be able to, at some point, uh, blow something up. He could get rid of a plant, but tediously, he'd get rid of quite a lot of his own stuff as well. So yep. uh, I don't think it'll be uh, staying at naught. And Yansa doing the math. It uh, looks like he's doing the whole swivel the arm. 9, 10, 11. Alamog, the infinite guy, destroying the titan. That's pretty good. It's indestructible. It has Annihilator 4. So what do you do if you're Wafa Tapper? Do you, just, you, you bounce it and, and attack for 6 with a 1 block, and that puts the answer to 10? Has he got a Creeping Tar Pit that would change the math? I think he's going to bounce it. I think that's, yeah, that, that has to be the play. Smash. Block take six. Order. Yep. Take six, yes, you do. Ten. Yes, you are. <laughs> Another Grave Titan from Waffa Tapper. Poof. Oh, now that was a response from Yansa. No, uh, no stonewalling uh, an emotional response to that one. It was like puffed out cheeks, like the, the punch to the solar plexus. Wow. Yep. And he scoops up his permanence. Wow, Guillaume Wafatapa really played. I think there were probably multiple opportunities to lose that game from the from the control deck. Oh, and, of course. And, 
you know, and Wafa Tapa just navigated his way through one. I'll brainstorm this turn. That's okay because I've got a Doom Blade. Then I'll, I'll uh, bounce your guy. Then, then I'll bounce again. Now I've got another Doom Blade. Just uh, he's so tough to beat. So tough to beat. Uh, so we're going to take you back to uh, Paolo V. De Dama de Rosa up against uh, Guillaume Matignon. They are fairly well advanced in their next game. Paolo V. De Dama de Rosa has a mystifying maze uh, in play amongst his lands, a tectonic edge, Seagate Oracle, the only creature in play right now, uh, while Guillaume Matignon um, has a collection of largely basic land. Uh, he's got a creeping tar pit uh, down uh, on the left of his lands uh, as uh, he attempts Jace Bellerin. Uh, which Palo is going to think about, has a ton of cards in hand. There you see the board right now. As uh, a mana leak, it looks like... Is that a f four Jace in Palo's hand? I have a feeling he has four Jace... Maybe even four Jace the Mind Sculptor in hand. In any case, this Jace looks like it may be about to be met with a mana leak. It is indeed. Will Matignon feel the urge to uh, debate the point? Well, looks like he... Uh, he's going to pay for the mana leak? Yep, he's going to pay. And at that point, Paolo says, sure, okay. S still on the stack. Okay, he's uh, sacrificing land, go and get an island, and we know he has another mana leak in hand. So that's what we're about to see, one presumes. There it is. And Manalik back right. the other way, which taps Matignon out. So he gets his Jace. Is there a Mind Break Trap in hand? I have not seen Guillaume's hand yet. That would be saucy. Paolo is indeed looking at several copies of Jace the Mind Sculptor in hand. Remember, he leads by 1 to 0. Seagate Oracle attacks. Matignon. And uh, Paolo will just lay a land. Jace Bellerin then for Matignon up against Seagate Oracle. Which put Jace down a peg. So Matignon remains at 14. We see a Grave Titan in hand for Matignon. Guillaume Matignon already guaranteed level 8 this year. And uh, talking of 6, 8, 10, Grave Titan would be 10 power of guys. But Mind Break Trap from Paolo says no. <coughs> Guillaume had not cast enough spell clicks last turn for that to matter, but he can just pay four here. Mm -hmm. And there's a cancel back the other way. And Palo says, yes, your Grave Titan resolves. Ten power of guys. Titan on Titan action. Clash of the Titans here at the top of World 2010. Tonic Edge takes out Creeping Tarpet. Matignon then says, here's Spreading Seas for your Swamp. Is he looking for Jace? Or does he have Jace? He has a Jace. And Bounce the Grave Titan. You see all these creatures getting bounced that you normally don't want to bounce. Yes. But that's because there were only creatures left that don't normally get bounced. That's uh, all there are. So there's going to be uh, blockings aplenty. 
an actual like combat red zone step. It only happened for a couple of seconds. If you blinked, you have <laughs> missed it. That, that was combat done for the top eight. Uh, but uh, Duresh, you see a lot of Jaces. Yep, three Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Uh, of course, the Grave Titan and a Spreading Seas. So Matignon has a, a think about that. And says we'll get rid of Spreading Seas. And Matignon has the edge currently. One, two, three, four mana. And Matignon knows exactly what this is. It's a pair of Jace the Mind Sculptors in the respective graveyards. Yep. Land from Paolo. So that's uh, what he saw. Back we go to Matignon. Guillaume Waffetapper and Lova Yansa tied at 1-1. One, one. Here we have more blocking. The 1-3 just bounces off a 2-2. Two, two. Creeping Tarpid has been activated by Matignon. That it's gets him get two more. Yep. The thing is, Pala really doesn't want to lose his Tectonic Edge, presumably, just in terms of mana and getting back right. to his own Grave Titan. I mean, he's in a, a bit well, of a bind here. Certainly, that's one of the motivations for Matignon, besides damage to attack. It's like, do you want to set yourself back a, another land? He knows he doesn't have any floating about. Did so. Matignon just show him another Jace? Oh, you need this one. Hmm. Paolo really thinking about this. He does go the Tectonic Edge route. Oh, Token dies. Seagate Oracle bounces off. But that board position from every angle is looking very French. And there's another Jace the Mind Sculptor. There is another Jace the Mind Sculptor. We know that Paolo has an answer to that, but... Yeah, it's not much he, of an answer in terms of just, like, tapping no, out. It's gonna fit no, but he, he doesn't have an answer to many, many... Titan plus uh, friends. Palo at nine. Strong the land. He plays his Grave Titan again. We're going to see Grave Titan get bounced for the second time. Mm hmm. The growing army of zombies. We are not far away from two to zero. Again, we saw Paulo down two to one in the quarterfinals. Indeed, we did. <laughs> Bounces the grave type. Sir Mash, good game. <laughs> Guillaume Matignon leads by two to zero over Palavita Dama de Rosa. Brad Nelson is feeling a bit happier. Mrs. Matignon, back at home <coughs> watching her boy, is probably uh, feeling quite happy as well. If Matignon wins this... Then Brad Nelson cannot lose, lose Player of the Year <laughs> this weekend. That is correct. Uh, no, we'll let them play on and we'll... because we're going to stay with this one. We're going to... we're going to... We're going to stay here and uh, watch this game three for sure. So we've uh, had a look at uh, the top Europeans. We've had a look at the top Americans. Let's bring you a slightly less exciting story, which is uh, the top 10 Japanese players uh, at this event. It's been an interesting year for the Japanese in many, many ways. And there you see, no one in the top eight, only one in the top 16. That, by the way, Yuta Takahashi, uh, we know him as King of the Fairies, the man who, who plays fairies in multiple formats. Part of the reason for him doing so well is fairies came round again in yeah, extended, absolutely. and he was, he was able to do that. Uh, Shuhei Nakamura uh, locks up level eight by finishing 18th. He is the only Japanese level eight this season. Yes, I've, I've been silent there deliberately just to digest that. I mean, that is 
That is seismic. It, as it a is shift. seismic, and it's seismic for Shuhei also, who who is, I think, foolishly concerned about whether or not he's going to make the Hall of Fame next year. Right? He is. He feels like he needs another top eight. Truly, to be, to be certain. Truly, truly, he's worried. And so he, he really wants to do well early next year. He wants to have a network of players. And, and he is not going to have the same traveling companions that he's had for the past couple of years. Indeed. Well, Kenji, of course, is uh, gone. We've got Yuya Watanabe and yeah. um, also uh, Kazuya Mizumura. Uh, they're two of the big names who one would hope we would still see on the European yeah. circuit. Because um, one thing we do notice, we're, it, it's, there's a sort of tremendous friendliness between the European pros and the Japanese pros because we see the Japanese travel to all the European GPs by and large. So over the last four years, um, I, I've seen far more, for example, of Shuhei Nakamura um, than a, any of the North American players by and large. Right. Um, you know, and it's, it's great to see them around the world. On we go. Uh, Ryo Tasaki, don't we, know much we about don't, him. We don't recognize and, a lot of these names until we get down you know, to Masashi Oiso. Yeah, Masai Kitayama um, has the top eight uh, along the way, but as you say, it's uh, very much uh, an inexperienced group. Uh, Masashi Oiso, uh, we saw, now he actually played Brad Nelson uh, in round 10, both at four and five, which was uh, utterly savage. So there's your top 10 Japanese players. Um, as uh, we go into the game, let's We're get underway here. These back guys shuffle to the action. Keep very quickly. We've uh, we're already two lands to the good for yep. uh, Paulo. So let's uh, head back to the action. There you are with uh, Paulo against Matignon. Two o to the Frenchman. You can see uh, Pro Tour <coughs> winner Tomohiro Kaji in the background there doing coverage. Yeah, we've had a fantastic Japanese coverage presence. It's been a sort of a English coverage along one wall, sort of eight guys just churning stuff out yeah. 24 hours a day, and then uh, pretty much the same for the Japanese right. audience. So. Uh, and, of course, we have simultaneous uh, Japanese coverage of the webcast uh, going out right now. So, um, you know, we can say, Japan, you're rubbish at magic. And no one will know because they're all listening in their own language. So Sh Shuhei Nakamura is actually uh, part of the webcast team for Japan. Oh, well, really? He's yes, he's working with Kochiro Maki. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. A new career beckons, perhaps. I tell you what, I think maybe a move to California beckons. <laughs> Inquisition of Kozilek from Guillaume Matignon. Paolo will crack a land. Take a mana leak. In the background, you see Guillaume Wafatapa, the two Guillaumes in shot there. Now you were, if you were paying attention in 2005, when Pierre Canali won Pro Tour Columbus, he credited two Guillaumes with building the deck that he used to win that event. Who, who were they? Th those were Guillaume Matignon and Guillaume Wafatapa, long before we'd heard of either of them on a professional scene. Indeed. Indeed, that was the first indicator that Wafatapa was going to be a great deck builder, because obviously he's sort of slightly fallen off the radar in that department. But you go to Drownu de Louvre, for example, from uh, Worlds 2006, um, and uh, obviously his winning teachings list from Yokohama 2007. They're spreading seas from Paolo. And it sounds like uh, Guillaume Wafatapa has uh, run the memory side uh, route once again against Lovi Yansa. Uh, it sounds like uh, assorted primeval titans will no longer be participating in that game. And that was uh, the summoning trap at the primeval titan was the game one win mm -hmm. for Lovi. Quite a difference in experience between those two in that uh, Lova has six lifetime pro points, all Which from came, Nationals yeah, this, year. this year. And uh, Guillaume Wafatapa uh, cru cruising towards 200, or over 200 with this performance. In fact, a semi-final loss would see him at exactly 200 points. Preordain. Paolo has Seagate, Oracle, Jace, Grave Titan, Matignon. I believe he has a Deprive in hand. Deprive's a card that you've been quite interested in watching through the weekend. A, a, almost a, a forgotten counterspell. People have forgotten you can actually counter spells for two as a hard counter. You, you, you certainly see situations where people play around Mana Leak. They play around Mana Leak. They get to the point where they can cast their spell and have three mana up, you know, into your two mana. And, you know, man, mm. you know Deprive is, is a nice hard counter there. 
and pretty neat flavour as well, because that's exactly how you feel. You feel you have been deprived uh, when that happens to you. Paolo taps three for his Seagate Oracle. Yes, that's fine, says Matignon. Paolo looks and looks and looks. Trying to decide if he wants to keep a land or a Jace, I think. Yep. And he's decided on the Jace. Just one. And it sounds like Wafa Tapper has taken the next game. Uh, having taken away the Primeval Titans, he's mm. taken away the game, which means that the Yansa now trails Wafa Tapper uh, by two to one. And there's really, there's really no way for him to deal with the Memora side. Uh, you know, from from Waffle Top, you know, we see these games. It's like, oh well, I can I can duress you, I can mana leak that, I can, you know, we, we th there's no give and take in that match, right? If he draws that card, he just gets to shut one route of victory down. Okay, let's do a little bit of interaction with the crowd. Crowd, is it memory side or is it memory side? If you think it's memory side, put your hands up right now. Not very many of you. That's what I think it is. If you think it's Memoricide, put your hands up right now. Yeah, a lot more of you. Put your hands up if you can't understand what language I'm talking. <laughs> yep, over <laughs> half the audience. That's what we like to see. All right, thanks, boys. Including several of your countrymen. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> uh, Matignon, two to the good here. Jace the Mind Sculptor, which he, he offered to put in the graveyard. That's always suspicious. I hate it when people do that against me. Seagate Oracle, Grave Titan. There's Jace, Bellerin, and Mind Sculptor. Yep. So, both Jaces go away. Seen plenty of use for Garrick Wildspeaker talking of uh, Planeswalkers this weekend. Uh, he seemed to have uh, done plenty of good duty around the formats. I feel like we've seen just about every standard legal Planeswalker in action at some point. Yeah, I mean, we've had Sorin Markov in sideboards uh, in the top eight. We haven't actually seen him in play yet, but uh, he's been around. Maybe not Chandra or Blaze. No. Spending Seas on Creeping Tar Pit. There you see it. We've seen, certainly seen all the non-base set ones, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's pretty... Right, sounds about right. So, what have we got there? We've got Manalik, Manalik, Deprive, Seagate Oracle, and Consume the Meek. <coughs> that is the Matignon Hand. That is the Matignon Cough. Left in the Consume the Meek. Mmm. Well, I guess it. I guess it kills titans, doesn't it? Can titan tokens? Sure, certainly. Yeah, it doesn't kill titans. Now let them play, Rashad. We'll hold them if it goes to five. What do I take? Those five cards staring up at Palavida Domodorosa. He only has a choice of three of them. So it's mana leak or deprive here. Oh no, he can take the Seagate Oracle. You talked about Brad Nelson would have been player of the year if he'd made one or two more wins at US Nationals and got himself on the team. I remember sitting with Paolo on day three or the back end of day two at Brazilian Nationals uh, where he was pretty certain that the, the math meant that he was going to run out of rounds one round short even if he won his last four. And he won his last four and was one round short along with Willie Adel and a bunch of other very talented guys. Um, Guillaume Medeiros Meyan was another who was on eight and four. And at the time, I remember going away from that event and thinking, I wonder whether we've just seen the handicap in the player of the year race shift subtly. And uh, those, those nationals, they're really quite big in Magic now that you have the points. 
How, how many players? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's just massive. It's up 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 to ten points for ten win, points for national champion. Plus, then six if you become team world champion. So, you know that is like a semi final of a pro tour. Uh, whether or not Paolo wins this match. Hats off to him because uh, he has had to focus away from magic. He's gone back to college. He's back at school and fi uh, finding magic events around his work commitments. Uh, and that is, that is quite a task. Yes. Um, as Moraine Leibert can testify. Um, as uh, Paolo says, here we go. Tectonic edge. Take out the tar pit. Matignon with his double mana leak hand. Just lays a... Re Placement land passes. In goes Seagate Oracle. Double mana leak, deprive, and the consume the meek. Not a ton of excitement going on for either player right now, it's fair to say. Matignon, by the way, we're talking about nationals. Get this. 2006, made the top eight. 2007, the national champion. 2009, third. 2010, second. That is in the French nationals top eight, which, yeah. by the way, has, you know, your Ruels, for example, and your Levis. And your Waffle Tapas. And your Canales. Um, that is just an extraordinary record at national level. Yeah, Pierre Canali finished ninth at French Nationals this year. Indeed, indeed. That's qualified him for this event. And had a fantastic day one. Uh, beat Simon Gertsen in the last round of uh, Swiss on day one to go undefeated. Uh, with Elves, that's right, isn't it? Canali yep. was uh, the green merchant with the Elvish Arch Druids aplenty and Azuri Renegade leader. Yeah, um, I love that deck. Designed by, uh, deck was designed by Sylvain L'Oreal. Mm -hmm. Another fine French deck designer. So now there's a Jace the Mind Sculptor in uh, Matignon's hand. And we're going to see another Spreading Seas. Reminder that at the conclusion of the semi-finals, we will have the Team World Final. That is uh, Australia and the Slovak Republic waiting patiently for their turn in the spotlight. All three constructed major formats, standard, extended, and legacy. No vintage, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we're not doing too badly. We'll attempt to bring you all those simultaneously um, as, uh, after the conclusion of the semi-finals. But Palo Vida Dama de Rosa will be hoping that is a long way away yet. Two down to Matignon. Waffa Tapper remember two one up over Yansa. Matignon starting to find the lands he's been sort of scuffling for this. Uh... Mm hmm. And he says, Can I have the Jace the Mind Sculptor that we saw him draw a couple of turns back? And well, since all we I have is a Grave Titan and an island. We know that yes. he can. Is he going to feed Seal? Yes, he is. But yeah, you can have that. I'm going to attack Jace with Seagate Oracle. Are you the going to say it correctly this time? Or do I have to say it? All right, then. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Guillaume Wafataba has successfully resolved Memoricide. <laughs> democracy in action um, <laughs> and uh, who needs it um, and um, with that memoricide the primeval titan um, have gone um, from Lover's deck happy it's primeval primeval oh my God. all right the titans have gone and that uh, sounds suspiciously like bad news uh, for Lovie Janssen and very good news for Andrea Girola of Italy because remember if Jansa wins that semi-final he will be rookie of the year but if he loses to Guillaume Wafatapa and currently Wafatapa 2-1 up we will have an Italian rookie of the, I the year succeeding Lino Bergold from Germany the 2009 winner 
Got a uh, Inquisition of Kozlak coming here from Paolo. Paolo. And I guess Matty, what's Matignon's thought process here? It was just like, he's just does trying he, to decide if he, he wants to counter it, or uh, he's, he's wondering, I guess, about maybe another. Yeah, no, he lets it go. Yeah. He's, so he's like, I don't care. You can look the at only my... thing I care about is you landing that Grave Titan. Yeah. And I can stop you even if you take one of my counter spells here. So yeah, take so my takes, hard counter. Take the hard counter, but still know that you're going to have to pay six extra for Grave Titan. Yep. Which Palo is uh, four shy of doing. That said, there's still plenty of legs left in this one. Jace at three. The Seagate Oracle. Down for Paolo. <laughs> Reminds him to put the Inquisition in his graveyard. I guess they're just lonely without too many non-land permanents. I think they're perfectly comfortable without <laughs> non-land permanents. <laughs> yeah, okay, there is I that. I think that's their natural <laughs> habitat. Oh, certainly Ganwafa Tapa's natural habitat. was interesting seeing uh, Guillaume Wafatapa using Sunblast Angel to uh, great effect uh, over the weekend uh, in his Cruel Control deck. Here we see a Jason Bellerin. Mm -hmm. And now it gets interesting because, of course, Matignon can counter and counter again. But does he want to? But then he has the issue of knowing that nope. Grave Titan's on the way. So it's just away we go. And... Uh, in for another point. Seagate Oracle, Oracle, nice card, not quite a Fidian. <laughs> Scroll Thief would be quite quite interesting in this matchup, huh? Oh wow, <laughs> wouldn't it just? Spreading seas. Those eeny meeny miny mo. Yeah. Pick one, any one. Back to the Brazilian. Spreading seas back the other way. Power, of course, attempting to become the second Brazilian world champion of 2010 in Magic. I hope you were with us over lunchtime uh, to watch Carlos Romao in the Magic Online World Championship match uh, defeat Akira Asahara by 2-1. to 25000 dollars to the Brazilian. 17000 to Asahara for runner-up. Tremendous weekends for them both. If you ever played against a control player, you recognize that sound of flicking cards. Indeed. Plays a baby Jace, draws a card. Another land pass. I guess the difficulty, the sort of shifting dynamic in this one is that Paolo is low on cards against a lot of cards for Matignon, so can't really force the pace. Matignon, on the other hand, has plenty of cards, but if he does force the pace, he runs the risk that Paolo has drawn the precise two cards over the those preceding two turns that are just going to destroy him, but and then win a war and untap and he there's just, my Grave Titan and suddenly uh -uh. it's just this is just all about Grave Titan for him. Yeah. And there is Grave Titan from Paolo. There is Manalik from Matignon. Pay there is three. pay. There is Manalik again. Go away. Oh, except no. Crack. You said just the right two cards. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. 
Yes, it is. The last card in his hand. <sighs> wow. Wowie. And now things have well and truly shifted. Tack for one. But where? Because if he attacks Matignon for one now to 11... He's going to attack Jace. Okay. Because he has lethal next turn. If he attacks Matignon. Puts him to 11 and then attacks for 11. Maybe there's creeping tar pits getting in the way. No, that doesn't work. Well, Jace is gone. Matignon says uh, I'd like a card. Yep, cashed it in. And what are Matignon's meaningful answers to Grave Titan plus um, friends? Another Grave Titan? It's pretty much that, isn't it? Just like that one there? Yes. Okay. Sometimes magic's all about the brute force, sometimes it's a dance. Not much happening on the other table. I can tell you that uh, Guillaume Waffa Tapper is seemingly in reasonable control. He's starting to brainstorm with Jace. If and not much is happening, that means Guillaume is winning. There is that, yes. But then it's one of those things where just one sudden turn, Emrakul, it looks like they've uh, done a bunch of in and out. Paolo now has four tokens. We know there's a consume the meek in Guillaume Matignon's hand. Mm -hmm. He says, Duress, what's that last card you drew? Let's oh, it was a counterspell. Take that story rebuttal. So you will not be dealing with my Consume the Meat. Go away. Let's start again. Except I'll start with Jace the Mind Sculpture. I'll Sculpter start with play. Brainstorm now and that, play. That, my friends, was a turn. <laughs> this is how we draw Fate it up. Fate seal <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You can have that. <laughs> yeah. That card right there, it's yours. Or is he thinking, no? No, 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 it's not. Oh, okay. Okay, Palace says, I'll have that instead. <laughs> no way! Oh, please. Jace off the top. No way! Cancel. <laughs> They're just staggering around the ring, punching each other. Great time for <laughs> Matignon. Take that. Uh. No, you're talking. <laughs> now you're talking, says Matignon. Remember, Matignon lost to Palavita Dama de Rosa. Is he about to get to the World Championship final? Paolo is at 18. Inquisition of Kozilek reveals Season a mind break, break trap. In for 10. Paolo is at 8. Two more zombie tokens. Pass the turn. Draw. Grave Titan. <laughs> <laughs> How many permanents on screen? Matignon. Gets in for seven here. He can get Paulo down to one. And does that work out? What has he got landwise? Have we got any creeping tar pits he does that have are a creeping, available? He has a creeping tar pit, it looks like. At Palad, so activate creeping tar pit. Sir, we're in. I have two more zombies. Oh, wow. You, you let things build, they simmer for a bit, and then boom, bang, bang. That was incredible magic. Apollo blocks in such a way that he keeps his Grave Titan. Yep. Oh, Memoricide. Memoricide. So, what 
So, what can... What can make you stay in this, says Matignon to himself. Because, of course, he doesn't get to look until he names. So he has to think what's there. He oh, says, that's right. He's got the unblockable creeping Spreading carpet. seas so that you can't deal with my tarpit. And Matignon will be looking through and going, is there anything left you can do? Is there a disfigure left in there? But well, even that should not do it. That's the game. There you have it. Brad Nelson cannot lose player of the year today. Revenge for Guillaume Matignon on Paolo Vita Dama de Rosa in the replay of the final of San Juan. And Matignon goes, <laughs> yes, I've done it. Oh, boy, that meant a lot to him. He advances to the final. He is dancing round, and uh, you see him race over to, um, well, I won't say ruffle the hair, because that's quite a task to ruffle the hair of uh, Kia Wafatapa. And uh, you see them, Wafatapa's like, you won? You just, you just messed my hair. What did you... Oh, okay, I'll let you off. You're in the World Championship final. It could be an all-French final. Paola Vita, Dama de Rosa, phenomenal run. He just annihilated the, the Swiss all weekend long, got himself into the top eight, got past the quarterfinal. We knew this was a potential semi-final when we went to bed last night. It delivered, and how? And Guillaume Matignon of France is one win away from a playoff for the championship of the world. <laughs> Mean wild. Guillaume Matignon and that is running along the rail for a series of high is, fives. That is unreal. Touchdown Matignon. As <laughs> the Lambo leap. The, <laughs> yeah, that's L apostrophe A M B E A U. Lambo leap. Uh, so let us, okay, enough of the excitement with that semi final. Let us take you to the back table um, and let us see what is going on in Guillaume Wafatapa against Lova Yansa. They will be hard pressed to deliver on the drama we've just witnessed in semi final one. Goodness me, that was epic magic. Wafatapa. Up against Jansa. Wafatapa leads 2-1. to one. There are some tokens in play, I can tell you, for Guillaume Wafatapa. There is a Jace the Mind Sculptor in play, with five loyalty on. There is not very much in play for Lova Jansa, who is passing the turn to the Frenchman. Preordain from Wafatapa. Is that collection over there on the left of the screen in play? Or is that just a graveyard of zombies? Oh, that down at the bottom here yeah. we've got? No, I, I do not believe that those are in play. Uh, I believe we have two uh, tokens in play. Uh, we have Jace up to seven. Jace is doing some sculpting. Closing towards ultimate. And it could be, if you're French, just about the ultimate final. Guillaume Wafatapa against Guillaume Matignon in the blue-black mirror. Bagsy Wafatapa. If he gets there. I will take Matignon. Oh, will you? In well, like, that's the choice I'm giving it's you. what but I'm left with. That's correct. <laughs> but you said that with rather more confidence than I'd have liked. Wafatapa activates Five, Creeping Tarpit. In for seven. Thirteen, nineteen, the life totals. Lan the answer. Oh, sorry. Just confirming that he's at thirteen, having taken seven. Ling Sherping from Sweden. This level one in his debut PT, been playing since Legions. Is the last Swede left in the tournament? Oracle. Oracle of Moldai is uh, being offered up. Guillaume Afatapa is uh, having a little think about that, as he does about pretty much everything. Just checks yet again that it is 13-19 and that he is well and truly in the box seat. And thinks about a counter. But thinks no. about the thought about Doomblade, actually. Okay. The, the sort of slightly delayed counter spell. Yeah. Draw. There's a Grave Titan, Grave Titan and Spreading Seas has gone in courtesy of Jace the Mind Sculptor. Don't think we're that far away from an all-French, all-blue-black final. All-Guillaume final? All-Guillaume. 
It's going to be Mono Guillaume. It'll be G Matt v G W T in the final, if that's the way it works out. The answer is not actually dead yet, so let's hang in there. Here comes Spreading Seas for Mystifying Maze. Here is Grave Titan for Guillaume Wafatapa. <laughs> Just pulls those zombies out of the graveyard there. Yep, yoink. 19 plays 9. There is the hand! It will wow. be an all-French final. It will be an all-level 8 final, I do it believe, yes, between Wafatapa and Matignon. It will be an all-Guillaume final. It will be an all-action final. Oh. I mean, non-stop, in action. <laughs> in action, yes. The world, in action. Uh, that's what's coming your way. Goodness me. Uh, congratulations, of course, to Lovi Yansa, uh, who battled valiantly there, took the opening game with that quick primeval titan, and a phenomenal weekend at your first pro tour, who wouldn't take semi-finals of Worlds. Wow, what an absolute experience that is for him. Uh, but... And he's now qualified for everything next year. Yes, indeed, absolutely, because with 16 with points this, yeah, 16 uh, and, six. and, and the six from, from Nationals, uh, we will well and truly be seeing uh, the Shark once again. So there you have it. That is the end of the semifinals. Uh, before you go away for your bathroom break, we've built one in for your comfort. That's how kind we are. For their comfort? For their and yours and mine, clearly. Um, so what we're going to do um, in a few minutes, we're going to have a little bathroom break. We'll chat a little bit first. Uh, then we're going to reset the stage for one of the highlights of the year. It's one of the highlights of Worlds as well. Three tables, line by line by line. You'll see Standard. You'll see Extended. You'll see Legacy. Uh, and that is the Team World Championship final, Slovak Republic against Australia, which uh, could be kind of fun. Yeah, it could be. And uh, I think we're going to look in on Extended, which is the next coming PTQ season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this may be of some interest to you at home. Take a look at some uh, high-level PTQ deck, possible PTQ decks in action. Mm -hmm. A deck that may be slightly less complicated than Conley Wood's Necrotic Ooze deck. <laughs> yes. Though that's not hard to do. His, Although you should, yeah. you should definitely watch the Conley oh. Wood's Necrotic Ooze deck. Actually, the Extended deck that you should check out. Mm-hmm. If you're going to check out any of them, is the deck by Jonathan Smithers. Jonathan Smithers is the man that beat Brad Nelson in the finals of Grand Prix Toronto. That's right, yep. Qualified him for this event. Mm -hmm. He brewed and he brewed and he brewed on Extended. And he came up with a deck that we've been calling Steel Artifact. S-T-E-E-L Artifact. Yes. It has four Tempered Steel, four Steel Overseer. It has four Court Homunculus. It has... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it has Ornithopters. It has Memnites. Wow. And it went 6-0 uh, in one player's hands, 5-1 in another player's hands. The deck is quite formidable. It is easy to overlook it and sort of, like, dismiss it as a bunch of fun cards to play. The re-rise of affinity? Well, we're, 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 kind trying to, we're trying to avoid the use of the word affinity here. So for Kelly, don't for hate Kelly it? Diggs and Sanity, you know, level of sanity. Ah, oh, all right. Not, not, not a fan of that. that He's term. not a fan of calling decks by a name that refers to a mechanic that they don't have in the deck. Like flying or the, the, the flying deck. Or, that, you know, or, when I called, or when I called the Vengevine deck Dredgevine, he was a little upset. Oh, you, you, can't, you can't do that because, as we know, Dredge dred is a mechanic that features the graveyard. Right. And it's like, no, I don't... Mm. Yeah, I see that. No, that's that's very... That's but anyway, very, you should check that video that's out. That's very bad of you. You should check that video video out. So, we have the Team World Final coming up. Uh, then, of course, we've got the World Championship Final. Guillaume on Guillaume. Paolo will not win Player of the Year. Brad Nelson could, but not today, or could today. If we have the scenario, Waffa Tapa wins... He cannot become player of the year. He'll just be the world champion. He'll just be a level eight. Guillaume Matillon will just be a level eight. And Brad Nelson will be player of the year. So there is still hope for Brad Nelson fans. Um, so uh, we've had a great day so far. Um, it is uh, just world championship action to come now. But we need to get things ready for the team title match between the Slovak Republic and Australia. So keep it right here. We'll be back 10 minutes time. See ya. Hey, Mark.